On today's show, New York taxi drivers are taking it on the chin because of car sharing, Lexus gives a glimpse at its next flagship sedan, and Nissan reveals a wild autonomous concept. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for October 28th of 2015. As we've reported, only three quarters of car owners get a vehicle repaired if it's been recalled. But for tire recalls, that number plummets to only 44%. And that's why the National Transportation Safety Board wants to make it mandatory to register tires. It's actually already a requirement for manufacturer-owned dealers, but independent tire retailers where over 90% of people purchase tires, don't have to register them for the buyer. This makes it nearly impossible for the manufacturer to contact owners if the tire is recalled. The NTSB would like to also see tire identification numbers printed on both sidewalls of the tire and to create a database to search for tire recalls based on the identification numbers. The agency also wants to better educate the public on tire aging and how to prolong the life of a tire. The NTSB would like to see these changes because in 2013, over 500 people were killed due to tire-related issues and 19,000 more were injured. We all knew that ride-sharing services would hurt traditional taxis, and now there is financial data to prove it. A fascinating report from thestreet.com about the taxi business in New York City shows that owning a taxi medallion in New York City was a better investment than putting your money in the stock market over the last 14 years. But car sharing services like Uber are wrecking that. Taxi medallion owners in Manhattan saw their annual revenue drop 24% in just the last two years. And that's because the popularity of ride sharing is soaring. Last year, there were 7,000 Uber cars in New York City. Today there are 16,000. In fact, there are more Uber cars in Manhattan than there are yellow cabs. That doesn't mean that yellow cabs are going away, but the writing is on the wall. Still to come, Mazda revives the rotary engine. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. And by Pure Michigan, Leading the automotive world in intelligent, connected vehicles, we run on brain power. We've seen some pretty bold styling from Lexus lately, mostly in the form of the automaker's spindle grille, but its newest concept takes that boldness to the rear of the car as well. Meet the LFFC, a flagship sedan concept that took center stage at the Tokyo Motor Show. While not a fan of the rear of the vehicle, I think the rest is well done. I happen to like the spindle grille, and the side profile almost has a subdued, luxury look to it. The interior is a bit futuristic as well, with controls that can be operated with hand gestures. And just in case you're not sure what can be controlled with a hand, a holographic image will show you. The LFFC is powered by a fuel cell that drives the rear wheels, but it also features two electric hub motors up front that make it all-wheel drive. Lexus says the concept offers a peek into the design and technology direction of the brand's future flagship sedan. Well, when I think rotary engine, I think of Mazda. And perhaps the most well-known application of the engine is in the RX-7 sports car. Now the automaker is giving us a look at what a future version of both could be. It just pulled the wraps off the rotary-powered Mazda RX Vision. With a long sloping hood and low slung roof, the concept has classic sports car proportions. Add in Mazda's Kodo design language, and this is one sexy car. I for one would love to see Mazda come out with a rotary powered car again, especially one that looks this good. But I wonder if the automaker could work out the engine's durability issues, not to mention make it efficient enough to meet today's standards. And coming up next, a look at more reveals from the Tokyo Motor Show. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. 
This is the human element at work. Dow. Nissan took the wraps off a wild looking concept called the IDS. It's an EV with autonomous capability. When the driver is in control, the interior looks like a normal car. However, once the driver selects pilot to drive, the interior completely transforms. The steering wheel folds into the instrument panel and a large flat screen comes out. The seats also rotate slightly inward to help make conversations easier. Nissan's autonomous technology, which it calls Nissan Intelligent Driving, also mimics how the driver operates the car. And speaking of autonomous vehicles, Mercedes revealed a concept called the Vision Tokyo. As you can see, it's similar to the self-driving concept it revealed earlier in the year. It can seat up to five people and features an interior that looks like a lounge. And like the previous concept, the Vision Tokyo is powered by a fuel cell electric hybrid system with a range of just over 600 miles. And in other fuel cell news, Honda unveiled the production version of its Clarity fuel cell car. Its stack is 33% smaller than the previous one and has a range of 435 miles. The company will start leasing the vehicle in Japan next March for $63,000. The Clarity will later be rolled out in the US and Europe. And don't forget to join us for AutoLine After Hours tomorrow. We'll have the folks from engineering company Pratt & Miller in the studio with us. So if you'd like to learn what it's up to in the defense, automotive, and power sports industries, tune in tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on our website, Autoline.tv. But that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching and making Autoline a part of your day.